you're actually being more mindful. You, you can be, you can take better inventory of that emotional landscape, right? And but that self-awareness increases and you're able to experience an increase in your ability to moderate your responses. You said the way you react and there's a difference between reacting and responding. Five, four, three, two, one. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Hey everyone, this is Snooks. And Lovey. Have you ever felt that you need additional assistance enhancing your intimacy? Uh, wait, what are you talking about? Okay, I'm not talking about in the bedroom. I'm talking about making the connection with your partner. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? There's an app for that. Yeah, and it's called Intimately Us. (laughs) I love that app because you know what? You get to play so many different games. Yeah, you're interrupting. They have Battleship. (laughs) And Sexy Twister, which is one of my favorites. And they also have uh, Conversation Starters and... Oh, the, I love the how-to. There's a how-to where you can actually learn techniques and things that you want to try with each other along with the sex exploration list. <laughs> so I was going to say, they also have great date ideas. So if this sounds good to you, download the app at r.intimately.us forward slash M-I-C. That's r.intimately.us forward slash M-I-C. The link will be in the show notes. Now let's get ready for the podcast. Welcome to episode 194 of the Married in the Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And as you can tell, just by looking at us, she is no longer diseased. <laughs> really? Look, if, if you guys watched the last YouTube um, or seen any of the pictures that came out from the last podcast, um, it was called The Bounce Back. And I have to honestly say that even though this one is going to be titled something different, this is definitely The Bounce Back. Because last time we were both masked up, um, she had just tested. I think you were. Were you positive at that time, or were you negative? Mm, I was still positive. But... She she was still positive. The house anyway. The house is now clean. We have purged the house of disease. COVID is gone. COVID be gone. Well, Rana told Rona, "Get out." I did. Only one of us can be here. Only one of us. Um, so no, we're, we're back on the mend. Everything's good. Um, it's nice. We don't have to walk around wearing N95s and, you know, being short of breath every time we climb the stairs. Not because we had COVID affecting our respiratory, because those darn masks. I couldn't breathe. We don't have to run from Isaiah either. He kept it forever, it seems like. That dude. Yeah. We're sitting there, you know, no mask on, talking, you know, because by the time everybody else tested negative, um, <laughs> That he comes running up, snot dripping, everything else. We're like, we don't know if you just like a little toddler or if you, or if you're like the COVID machine right right now. Like just back up, back up. And he didn't understand, you know, we weren't really holding him a lot, but poor baby. He was like, anyway, Papa and Gigi suck. No, maybe Papa, not Gigi. Uh, Definitely Papa, because I was telling him like, look, bro, hey, uh, uh, get down. He's being mean. I was like, get off my side. I walk in there and he, he'd act like he was going to sleep. He'd be like, night, night, and jump on my pillow. <laughs> and I'm like, and every time he would do that, he's like blowing snot. He was not. Uh, Why are you exaggerating like that, though? He Seriously. was slobbering on my no, pillow. He was not. The boy leaves a Bruh, trail no, of slobber was. everywhere he goes. No, he, he just walks around with slobbing and out his mouth. He's like a, he's like a human no, snail. No, he's not. Stop talking about him like that. Anyway, I know your shame. <laughs> But we're blessed to have him here with us uh, for a little while longer, a couple more days. A couple more days, yeah. He's been here since, uh, it's been over a month. We've had him since the day after Easter. So we we, we said we've had enough and he got to go. Amen. Nah, that's not Amen. why. Oh, no? Okay, my bad. Uh, no, <sighs> so that's what's been going on. But I'll tell you what, this kid will force so you. Mean. All the grandkids, especially when we get all three of them, they will force you to really want to meditate and have like these Zen moments, you know, you would see, uh, who was that? Uh, oh, it'd be like Martin Lawrence. 
<laughs> you sit there and want to have these moments where I just need to get my mind right because yeah, he's, um, I'm about to catch a case with these little bodies. He's a, uh, he's a lot. He's definitely a lot, but I'm going to say, I think I'm going to miss him. Oh, I know I am. You know, I said, I think, I think I'm going to miss him, you know. Oh, we complain, but then. Just him, this, the, his energy in the house. It's, it was kind of cool, kind of cool a little bit, having a little tiny person in the house again. Um, definitely keeps us on our toes, but you know why? It definitely makes because Legos mess. are everywhere. Oh my gosh! Stay on our toes because, I, look, you get up to walk around late at night, <laughs> and he doesn't put his little blocks away. You talk about some pain. But here is the thing: he is heck of funny, very stubborn. He never wants to say please. He knows how to say it, but he just just like mm -mm. I'm like say please. <sighs> I mean, he almost throws a whole fit. I'm almost. like okay. Go sit down then. You can't say please. You don't get it, you know. And that's his one thing. He, he'll he say thank you. He'll say everything. He'll well, say not. bless you. You'll sneeze. He'll say bless you. Yeah. he say thank you. You can hand him something. He'll do all that. But the moment you say, okay, say, say please, please, he'll look you straight in the face and be like, mm -mm. I'm like, well, you don't want it that bad. So it's whatever. I don't, know what, I don't know what the hang up is. On I, that. I don't know either. I was like, maybe it's because it's, is it hard to say? P like, no, it's not. He says everything else. So now, when I made it a song, I was like, please, please, please. He would walk around singing that. <laughs> but then I say, okay, you want some candy? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, okay, say please. He just like his whole face would go straight. Yeah. He's like, mm, you ain't tricking me. Yeah. He's funny. But anyway, well, we're going to miss him. He's going home. Um, Cause we're going out to what Atlanta, is that? Atlanta to the black pod fest. Yeah. Next podcast will be highlighting the Black Pod Fest. So it's what we're, what we're going to be attending. This is a business trip that we're taking together where we're going out to meet up with a lot of other African-American podcasters um, within the industry, not just podcasters themselves, but also people that support podcasting. Um, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be like going to the Mecca. I, look, she laughing because I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> that doesn't mean she is. I, I'm not saying anything. I'm I'm going because I mean you asked me did I want to go and I didn't say yes readily. <laughs> I mean I'm being very honest. I was like uh, I don't know and you know I think we were actually so we were talking about either going to this or the family reunion because we couldn't do both. So naturally I was like sure. I, I want to go to the family reunion you know. But it just didn't work out anyway because the it's family cool. reunions later and school and stuff. So he's like, well, we're going to the Black Pod Fest. I was like, okay. Hey, look, she, she's playing the role because she became friends um, with with Angel. Uh, if you think about uh, a did. while ago, we uh, we interviewed Angel and Gaza. And Angel and Gaza have a podcast the called The Lion and the Mermaid. The Lion and the Mermaid. Mm -hmm. uh, and which the is, Unforgiven. And it, well, more so Lion and the Mermaid. The Unforgiven's kind of gone by the wayside. But, oh, really? Yeah, they just haven't done, they just haven't done more I was about episodes. To say, no, it hasn't. Anyway, go ahead. But Line of the Mermaid, um, it's parental advisory. Yeah, uh, it's not for children. It's not for children by any means, but it's really good. And we had like a small bit part in uh, this last season, <laughs> so that was kind of fun. But they hit it off. They text each other and talk, and then every now and then, Angel and I uh, will we'll go back and forth on Instagram. But she's she's got friends that are going to be there, so now she's happy. I have a friend. He a acts friend. like I know fifteen people. So we're going to go out there and uh, have a good time, learn a little bit more about the industry, learn how to make the podcast that much better while we're out there. So that way we can hopefully increase the quality and uh, the content and all the things that you're used to, but make it that much better. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, if you would right now, if you like the, the way things are, if you've been enjoying yourself through these 194 episodes, 194 plus, um, go over to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and leave a review. Leave a review and put five stars on it. Put five on it. <laughs> and while, since you're online, take another five seconds and go over to marriedintocrazy.com. Go there and book a discovery call. For those of you that think, you know what, we want to talk to these guys and you know make our, our marriage that much better. Go from wherever we are right now, if you're average and you're like, okay, we might need a little assistance to good. Or if you're like, hey, everything is good on this end. But you know what, just like changing oil, let's go in for a little bit of maintenance. If, if you want to go from great to phenomenal, it's not about us, it's about you, but we give you resources and tools, things that we've received as we've continued our training through like the Gottman Institute. Uh, we're both level one, level two certified in the Gottman Method couples training, 
uh, therapy. And so we use that along with our extreme execution training with Dr. Eric Thomas. Um, and the things that we learn, because we're also moderators in the community for, for ET, for his marriage community, and, and we do all these different things, and we bring it to you through our coaching. So you can go there and book a discovery call just to chop it up for 15 to 30 minutes just to kind of figure out, are we a fit? And since you're already going to be on the website, feel free to go over to the store mm -hmm. that's on the website and get you some Married in the Crazy gear. Now, you can't get the shirts you see now because oh, this is I old know. school. This is vintage. This is the vintage stuff. This, this, you don't know. What you know about that? <laughs> Whatever. No, so you, you can't get these. Now, for certain sizes, we might be able to gift a few people here and there. But... Go there and check out the new gear. There's a lot of great stuff, especially for the fellas or the ladies, whoever likes to barbecue. There's a really cool uh, Married in a Crazy apron out there. While somebody's indoors, the other person outdoors can let everybody know, hey, I'm out here cooking because I'm Married in a Crazy. Check it out so you can see what I'm talking about. So uh, we just paid the bills. We're good. But when we come back, we're going to tell you all about <laughs> the, the, the Black, Black Pot Fest. Fest. It's gonna, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be food trucks and classes and I want to go to the slutty vegan. I can't wait. A, oh. <laughs> you should have saw her face. You should have saw her face. There's a, there's a restaurant called the slutty vegan. She knew I wasn't talking about her because she ain't no vegan. Oh, my gosh. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> you're, like, you're trying to put all our business out there. Wow. Okay. No, but I plan on going out there really enjoying the food. I want to savor every single bite of everything we're eating you know that, that that's a form of mindfulness you know just kind of eat, savoring savoring the moment savoring the food and, and that's something we want to talk about today and that is being more mindful in your relationship being more mindful in your marriage <laughs> so exactly how would you define mindfulness though like what is mindfulness to you Oh, exactly. Kind of like what I just said, being in the moment, being uh, present. Mm -hmm. uh, like, okay, I was using the example of I, I just want to I want to enjoy every single bite. Well, a form of mindfulness, uh, particularly for those of us that are on a, uh, a weight loss journey, you know, um, or a health journey, let's call it that, where instead of throwing food in your mouth, taking a few bites and swallowing it in chunks. Like me. I, I'm guilty too. <laughs> it, it's taking... A smaller bite and really using your, your teeth to masticate, which is to chew up the food, to really grind it down to where you can change the consistency. So if you've got something that's like crunchy, chew it till it's no longer crunchy, till you no longer feel that crunch. Um, if you eat like a piece of bread, you can feel that consistency. Whatever the initial consistency is, chew it until the feeling changes, till it's fully masticated. Um, and you're going to do two things. Number one, you're going to be more mindful. You're going to Focus on the taste, all the different flavors that you're experiencing. Is it spicy? Is it sweet? Is it savory? Is it all these different things? You know, and you, you start to experience that, but it also does your body a good thing because you allow certain enzymes to get in there and break it down for better absorption. So you're doing multiple things all at once. But I think being mindful is really, it comes out to, comes down to being in the moment. Yeah, I, I'm, I was looking for that. Being in the moment, I feel like um, being aware of your surroundings, um, and it, especially when you're talking about your with your partner, mm, right. you know, being aware of your partner's um, what they have going on. <clears throat> We're not mind readers, <laughs> but there are times when I mean, you know, I can feel when you when your aura is off. And I think, you know, you can probably feel, <laughs> I know you can, you can feel when mine is off. And, and for most, for most partners, you know, you come in the house, somebody comes in, you'd be like, uh oh, right. Well, what's, what's going on with this one? I can you know? always tell when yours is off because your energy is off and it usually starts with, ooh, uh -uh, like we talked about last ooh, time. Uh -uh. See, <laughs> yeah, you know, you got this telltale I sign. Don't, I don't always say that though. You say it a lot. I say, ooh, uh, uh, a lot. That just means they getting on my nerve at home. I hear it a lot. <laughs> so, no, but no, but mindfulness practice, you know, it's going to help you shift your unconscious behaviors that are are impacting our relationships on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It increases your awareness of like all your habitual behaviors, these things that we do unconsciously all the time. But if you're being more mindful, 
it's you're really making an effort, being intentional, if you will, about really understanding how you're impacting your spouse. So in one thing, it, we, we talk a lot about this with, with our different couples um, during coaching too, talking about the, the art of unlearning, <laughs> yeah. you know? So it's like when you're, when you're being mindful, sometimes your brain will rewrite um, the way that you respond to certain things. Okay. Yeah. Because you're not just going in like I'm just coming in hot and I'm going to just say whatever and I'm a you know being mindful. I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> we 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 take our time cuz when you're used to responding that type of way, that's just your go-to automatically. So being mindful, I'm going to be mindful about what I'm saying, how I'm responding, how he's I'm I'm feeling his aura or you're feeling mine. And I'm going to take my time, just like with the food, mm -hmm. and let my brain process what's being said. And so it's going to rewrite the way that I respond. This is just my, you know, my, my little pontification, I guess. Come on, preach. But it's going to rewrite, rewrite how I respond to what you're saying. Because typically, if I'm always coming in, like I said, I'm coming in hot, or I'm coming in, you know, Oh, uh, uh, blah blah blah, whatever. Like you like to say, I, ooh, uh, uh, a lot. But now I'm I'm stepping back, and the ooh, uh, uh, it's not coming out because my brain <laughs> is rewriting what my response is gonna be. That's um, me being mindful of how I'm responding, how and hopefully how you're going to receive. I'm thinking, how will he receive? what I'm saying. Nope, I agree. See, when, when you become more mindful, um, let's call it of your emotional landscape. When you look out and you see the landscape before you, if you're actually being more mindful, you, you can be, you can take better inventory of that emotional landscape, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. that, that self-awareness increases and you're able to experience an increase in your ability to moderate your responses. You said the way you react and there's a difference between reacting and responding. Mm, right. You're but right. when you're talking about we're in the moment, we're just doing what we normally do. That's usually a reaction. A reaction. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do is have a, a, I won't call it methodical, but we want to have a measured response. So when you, well, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. I want to say the same thing. Well, it's, it's but exactly like, what you were saying. I'm just saying it's just a nuance. Because I feel like you're trying to call me out on the podcast. No, like, no, no. <laughs> it's the same. No, I mean, it, it, what you were saying, I agree with 100%, mm -hmm. but I, I just like the word response, response as right. opposed to reaction. Well, because like you say, though, when we re when we react, I know reaction is typically for me, if I'm just reacting, it's going to be negative. You know, if I'm responding, it's more positive. I sound more intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know? that mindfulness increases your sensitivity to your emotional response to your experience. And it helps you understand and respond in, in these new ways, right? Because and I say new ways only because then it's it's something different than the way we always do. Because like you said, our go-to. Mm -hmm. We so often just go to what we're, what we're used to doing. It doesn't make it right. And you say, well, that's just who I am. No, that it's not necessarily just who you are. It's just the way that you've been allowed mm -hmm. to do things over a course of time. So you've mm -hmm. got this path that you've been walking. And we always want to go to the path of least resistance. And that's the one that we're most comfortable with, which is the one we do the most. Again, doesn't make it right. Just makes it familiar well and and uh, to that point too just kind of just piggybacking on what you just said if you think about it it's it's our conditioned beliefs and our personal experiences that kind of i agree you know make make us go this way or that way however however it is that we respond but but here's the funny thing it's like oh i'm just keeping it real you know it's like oh and we say, you know, the, the, the R in real is, is about realism, Stay, staying Being real, mm -hmm. not like, not like the, like the comics talk about, you know, when keeping it real goes bad or when it goes wrong. Um, I'm talking about the re the reality of what it truly is. And if you're experiencing a strong emotion, you can turn towards the person that, you know, you, you see, and rather than like come at them a certain way, you can keep it real and be honest and open about how you're truly feeling. It's like, you know, I'm feeling some kind of way right now and I, I don't understand why I feel the way I do. Mm -hmm. That's real. Well, and, 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 and just in, in that point too, 
we have to get away from that. Oh, I'm just keeping it real. I think we've, you know, we've, we've talked about this before and we will continue to say it all the time. Just because you say I'm keeping it real, that does not mean you get to be mean. You know, you can be real and you can be kind at the same time. It doesn't mean, well, you know, that's just how I am. And, you know, and, you know, I, I don't mean the bravado like that, but that kind of is how it comes. Well, you can't take it. That's just me. That's, I'm just, no, you're, you're just being, you can't handle all this. <laughs> you're just being mean at that point. Because sometimes when we say we're just keeping it real, we taking shots. Oh, Let's just be honest. We we're, we're just taking shots because I feel some kind of way because I'm actually in my feelings. I mean, I want to tell you I'm in my feelings, but I'm in my feelings. Oh, I know when you're in your feelings. <laughs> but isn't that funny, though? Because we always know when our spouse is in their feelings. Oh, I ain't, I ain't in my feelings. I ain't in, Why are you getting all hyphy then? You are in your feelings. Yes, Just be yes, real. You are. Everybody can see it. Everyone can see it. Everyone can see it. The dog ran outside. It's hiding right now. <laughs> but just, you know, like I said, just like and like a piggybacking on you again. Just because you are keeping it real does not mean that gives you license to be mean. You can keep it real and you can keep it kind and you can keep it classy all at the same time. So when, Did when I just this... rhyme? <laughs> Well, you have all these, these flare-ups, right? When you start to really flood, we talked about flooding in the past, but when you're doing all that, you know, you, you're in tune with your emotions and you can start to express yourself in ways that are new to you, but that are, it can still be raw and honest and super compassionate, but it's, it's about being in the moment and being, finding ways to really set the stage to share that with the other individual. It's, it's look, all we're really talking about is staying in the moment in the moment, not being like, Oh, I'm heated. I'm going to stay angry. No, like, and then I'm like, what am I really feeling? And why am I feeling it? And how is it manifesting? That's a, that's a good point too. And, um, I didn't mean to point, but anyway, um, one thing that I think we need to realize and recognize when we are stressed, we are not in our present. We are not being present because when I'm stressed out, I'm thinking about the thing that has me stressed or I'm thinking about my mind is somewhere else. So I'm not in the present. I'm less present, if that makes any sense to you. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So earlier today, just full transparency, Lovey had called and I was working from home today and I was, I was stressed out about something that I was working on and, he, you know, he's trying to talk to me. <laughs> I was not present. I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because my mind is on this thing. And he picked up on, he's like, okay, I'm gonna let you go because I know that you're, you're busy and you're doing whatever. And I said, oh no, I'm okay. But he was like, no, you're not. Okay. I'm going to get off the phone. But it's just one of those things when we're stressed, we're less present and we tend to, how do I say this? So if I, if, if, if I'm less present and you're trying to engage, instead of me being honest and real, I'm going to convey, I, it's going to act, feel like I'm not paying attention to what you're saying. Like I'm just kind of ignoring you. Right. Instead of being saying, babe, look, right now I got this on my mind, yada, 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 however you say it. Um, because, but we, we don't say things because we want to avoid an argument. But now I'm about to cause an argument because I'm not even being. Well, I wasn't going to argue, but no, but it, no, that's what but happens. I'm, I'm not saying on the phone today, but, but. No, it happens. And and it's so funny. You know, you, you're like, the, the instinct is to turn away from the challenging emotion or the challenging feeling. And whatever the feeling was that you were feeling, that, that frustration, that challenge you were having with work, you know, turning away from that um, as it arises is a challenge rather than, it's just like, in the, like one of the Gottman uh, methods that we use talking about turning towards. So if you're taking a look at a sound relationship house, you know, we talk about bids, you know, bids turning toward each other. Or are you turning away from each other? Well, we also have to do the exact thing when it comes to our emotions. We need to turn towards that emotion, whatever it is we're feeling. If it's anger, turn towards that anger. If it's, you know, frustration, turn towards it to, to recognize it, to see it for what it is. You can't recognize something for what it is if you're turning away from it. It's like turning your back on it. Oh, I don't see you. Therefore, you don't exist. But all it does is grow. But if you turn toward it, you face it in the moment, like, I am frustrated. Why am I so frustrated right now? And it could have been just that easy. Babe, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I do feel frustrated. I do feel off. 
I'm doing this thing at work and da, 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 and we could have talked about that just for a brief moment for you to just to have that cathartic moment of just releasing that feeling talking about it might have been all you needed to actually or any of us needs in that moment is to just release that it doesn't mean you're going to fix the problem but it means that you, you're able to experience catharsis in that moment and catharsis for those of you that don't know is um it's this phrase where you're just whatever you're feeling inside instead of like bottling it up and suppressing it and pushing it down you're just letting it out catharsis happens when well, like snick says all the time i just need a good cry i just need to get it out <laughs> i don't say it all the time but but that, have, that's catharsis. I have cry days yeah right <laughs> i know a lot of them that call them cry days you know or they just like i just need to i just need a good cry you know fellas you know we're not immune there's times where something is so pent up where you just feel like Remember those days where you just wanted to punch a wall? Oh, I don't know what it is. I just want to hit something. Oh, you need a cry day too? <laughs> yeah. I, I, can, t I can totally plan one. You plan a cry I day? Can, I can plan it. We can we can cry together. Y yeah, I do. I have those. <laughs> On the 1st and 15th of every month when the check rolls in and I'm like, oh, I got paid. And then I look oh, at the bank account God. and look at what you spent. You I, I, those go. are my cry days. Whatever. Don't even go there. But no, I mean, but that's, it shows up in different ways. So we have to have those cathartic moments, right? But that, that requires us to turn to and acknowledge that's about, again, it comes back to being mindful. Mm -hmm. And we're, right now we're talking about emotions, but there's other things that we can be mindful about. I mean, a topic that always comes up is intimacy. And a lot of sex is like, okay, you know what? It's 11 o'clock at night. I got to get up early in the morning. <laughs> Let's just hurry up. And... I'll be like, let me <laughs> Are you asleep? Right? <laughs> and it's like, but how, 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 when's the last time you were mindful? Not, <laughs> not primal, but mindful in the act of lovemaking. And really being in tune and looking into your spouse's eyes or paying attention to what you're doing and feeling, you know, trying to, you know, understand the rhythm of his or her heartbeat, their breathing pattern all these different things, you know, filling them tense up and just really being in tune. Or is it like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get this, let's go. Handle that business. It's, there needs to be more mindfulness in that. I mean, when was the last time that, let's take it outside of that intimacy, but when's the last time you sat down and talked to your, your child and were really in tune with what they had to say? I mean, listening. Not like, okay, let me fix this real quick. You know, tell me what your problem is. I mean, like really listening and looking at how they're telling you their story and either their excitement or their disappointment and then becoming empathetic, becoming an empathetic listener and not just an active listener listening to them so you can recount what they said and regurgitate it, but an empathetic listener. The only way you can be empathetic or be an empathetic listener is by being in the moment, being there, listening, completely present. Mm -hmm. So there, there's so many different things that you can actually do, but you're probably asking yourself, well, tell me more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, mindfulness is something. The mindfulness practice is going to help you shift that behavior like we talked about earlier. But one of the other things you need to do is like, how, how do I practice this mindfulness? There's got to be certain things that we can do. Like, well, let, let me ask you, I mean, since we're talking about it, do you have any mindful or intentional exercises? Well, yeah. So one thing that helps, I, f I feel like this mindful thing, mindfulness thing that helps us stay connected. Oh, I already know what you're gonna say. Go what ahead. am I gonna say? No, go ahead. Um, we, we've shared before that we pray every morning and typically, you know, I won't say typically, but we, you know, you pray most time, you close your eyes we hold hands or whatever. So now we, we've stepped it up. And so now we're, we, we look into each other's eyes as we say our, our morning prayer, um, as we hold hands. Um, it's an exercise that we actually started doing too with our couples, not necessarily the prayer part. Um, but what we have them do is take their hands, like take each other's hands and you look into each other's eyes we set the timer for 60 seconds we start off at 60 seconds and you just hold hands and you just look at you just look at your person your spouse your boyfriend girlfriend whatever but look at your person and just looking at them in their face <laughs> 
not looking away, not, you know, looking down. It always becomes a staring contest. No, well, it doesn't actually. I, I think initially maybe, but when you start to get into connecting, I, I feel like yeah. it, it, it helps with the connection, being mindful, um, just gazing. And by the way, all, all you guys that just heard that, you, you need to pay us. You need to send some money in because that's part of our therapy. No, just playing. <laughs> I was like, just what? Play. I'm like, send your checks too. No. No, but you know, it, it's, it's something that's good to have the couples do. And it, I think it's something good for you all to do also because when you're able to be mind, when you're being mindful, mindfulness opens up to connection and which leads to intimacy. So that's one way. Well, um, uh, and let's give credit where credit is too. Um, we picked up the turning towards each other and looking into each other's eyes at the become. Oh yeah, at the be, becoming. Becoming yeah, be, become marriage. Um, becoming marriage retreat. Retreat. Yeah. And, and so, and we we took it up a notch, and we even it, it, it'll evolve. Start off with something like that, you know, just standing there or sitting, holding hands, looking each other into each other's eyes. For 60 seconds don't say anything just to look and gaze into each other's eyes for that connectedness but in our prayer we started off with um, one of us praying and then now we do it to where we both pray like i'll pray or she'll pray first and then i'll pray secondarily or we we, we alternate whatever it is but the whole time with eyes open and seeing you know the god in, inside of each mm -hmm. of us it's really cool shout out to declare declare <laughs> and the muhammad's right and the muhammad's the ones that told us about it anyway sorry y'all inside joke so um that's one thing that we that we do and do you want to or you want me to go ahead you go. so the other one is about um touch how to be mindful too this exercise takes one one partner lays down on their back and the hey. other <laughs> the other partner just touches each part of their body for like 30 seconds, 30 start, seconds. You start at the feet. Yeah. You start at the feet. I mean, you touch feet, ankle, legs, whatever. And you're just, and you're just connecting for 30 seconds, you know, on each body part, on each body part. Now the person that's receiving it, if you're, if you're the one laying on your back and you're receiving the touch, the intentional touch, eyes closed, and really connecting with the sensation, you know, trying to connect with the feeling and the emotion or the sensation of what's transpiring, really focusing on that touch while the person that's doing the touching really focuses on, you know, like, I'm going to know these toes. I'm going to know, I, I'm going I'm to know what they look like. Oh, that's a beautiful ankle. I'm going to look at that ankle. I never noticed okay. that there was a dimple. But you're not going to be talking like Lovey's talking no. right now. Okay. But, 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 but be intentional in your your <laughs> observation. Be just as intentional in your observation or, or mindful in your observation as the person is being intentional about receiving and, and focusing on the touch that they're receiving. Mm -hmm. This isn't a sexual exercise. I mean, what happens, happens. That's on y'all. But this is really about going from your feet to All the, the top, of, to your the top head. of your head. Mm -hmm. it, but being in the moment to understand. And, and you can do this as often as you like. Yeah, and then after, um, then you guys switch places, and then the next person, well, obviously, you switch places, and then... Um, and then it do what it do. do. <laughs> but what I was going to say afterwards, you know, you can talk about how that made you feel, how, you know... You can say that. I'm just talking about it. I'm getting turned on just looking at you and talking about the touch. Get your hands off me. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that. And you know what? And, and if you're thinking, I don't know, can I do that? Well, my partner... There's some things that you can do to even just when you're by yourself. If you have an eye watch, there's that breathe exercise that is on your watch. You can do something as simple as just doing a very basic breathing exercise. Mm -hmm. You know, they have even something the Navy SEALs do. It's called box breathing. You can sit there where you can inhale, and it's like belly breathing. As you inhale, your stomach should be going out. And then you hold it for a few seconds, and then exhale and your stomach should be contracting, coming in, then you hold it. It's like inhale is one, hold it, exhale is two. So it's inhale, hold, exhale, hold. 
one, two, three, four. That's box breathing, right? One, two, three, four, box breathing. But doing that nice and slow, just a smooth process. And do that for a few seconds. And then would, and, and focus on your breathing, how you're feeling, what you're hearing. In those moments, that's being intentional in the moment. And that's a great exercise to do in the office. It's something that you can do Actually, when you're when you're driving, just don't close your eyes. That's what I say. What? No, you don't have to close your eyes, but you can do that at a stoplight. For as long as you're at the stoplight, do some box breathing. If your <laughs> kids are going off in the store, oh, do hit them with a box. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> no, but have fun with it. But these are different ways. So those are three methods right there, where you can actually you know work on your breathing. If you have the iPhone, fantastic. I'm not iPhone, but your um, iWatch. You can actually use that uh, the breathing exercise that's on your watch or it guides you. You can tell it, I want to do this for 30 seconds or 60 seconds or two minutes or however long, and it'll actually take you through this exercise of breathing. It's really cool. But these are ways that you can increase your mindfulness. The more mindful that we can be, the more it'll increase your sense of appreciation and gratitude for your partner. Mm -hmm. You know what? Also, um, yoga yoga do couples yoga she says that she's never done couples yoga with me i have done couples we yoga did it. with lovey and it was a long i don't time ago. like to do any type of exercise with lovey because he loves to scrutinize if i'm not doing oh put your butt up more you need to bend more move your leg no you're not lifting right when i tell you to put your butt up more it ain't got nothing to do with scrutinizing <laughs> really okay <laughs> and ain't no scrutiny <laughs> Whatever. Scrutiny. <laughs> but what I was saying. <laughs> Sorry, made me snore. Look at you. So nasty. We married. You're so silly. We married. Everybody don't want to hear that. The sex is sanctified. Ugh. Anyway. Look, but you can have mindfulness practice, uh, you know, to increase your appreciation and your gratitude for each other. That's something that happens. And, and what happens is you increase your relationship connection mm -hmm. and your satisfaction. It's about raising. Look. Everybody's concerned about raising their satisfaction score. You know, when you go shopping, you go to a store. Oh, how was your experience? Everybody wants to send you surveys after you buy something. Mm. What was it like? Well, let's increase our marriage satisfaction score. Hmm. You can do it through a mindfulness exercises by connecting with each other. And you know what? Let's, let's have you get five stars at home. Right, that part. In that relationship. Seriously. So these are certain things that you can actually do. And you talked about stress earlier. These exercises can help lower stress, which will in turn make you more open to your partner as well. Yeah, it helps you be present. So hopefully you guys got something out of this particular podcast. If you did, please, please, please go leave a review. That is our, that is our bread and butter. That is what we really desire um, for you guys to leave it and, and invite a friend. Absolutely invite a friend. So please do that. And, um, I'm looking forward to getting on a plane this Friday, flying out to Atlanta from Cali, going to the slutty vegan to eat food. Ugh, good Lord. I, he just likes saying that. He S just want to say it. Slutty vegan. <laughs> um, but I want to go do that. I'm going to be mad too. I hope they, but there's going to be a bunch well, of food trucks close. and stuff. Uh, no, but it's, mean, it's a small place. You got to get it like to go when you go there and get it. It's not like a big restaurant from what I've heard, but I heard it is so worth it. Hmm. So anyway, I want to try that out. I'm okay. sure there's other food. I don't want to be walking around eating my food, though. Sweating. It's going to be like 85 degrees and humid. I don't know. It's raining right now. Ugh. Anyway, you guys don't want to hear that. But look, until the next time. Be blessed. Bye. Bye-bye.